What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And you are tuned in to another episode of Four Minds. Where a drunk mind speaks sober thoughts. So, let I'm me speaking just... sober thoughts, period. Because here I am on yes. day 33. No liquor. And you know I had to pull it up. So, I am really kind of excited for today's episode because this is like throwback. This yeah. is like wind down Wednesday vibes for sure. It is. So shout out to all of our like day one listeners um, who used to listen before it was Poor Minds. They mm -hmm. used to listen to Wind Down Wednesday because this is definitely wind down Wednesday vibes. It is for sure. Yes, we used to be. We said we used to be sitting at the bar. Yes, we used to be sitting at my little bar. But we did a few little videos on the couch, mm -hmm. like when we did the whole bag one on one. Y'all remember the whole? That's a classic video. That has, like that's the video on our YouTube channel that has the most views. Yeah, like fourteen. Okay. So all the new listeners that are here, make sure y'all go to our YouTube and go back to like the old videos mm -hmm. and just see like whole bag one on one, just little cute stuff that we used to do. You yeah. know what I'm saying? All the good old days. Um, what else did I have to say? You know, shout out to Medina for coming on the show last mm -hmm. week. Before that, we had uh, Jazz. Shout out to Jazz. Then we had before yeah. that, we had Kiki. Kiki. So shout out to all them. But I'm very excited for it to just be us today. I am. Yeah, we've been having a lot of guests lately. It hasn't been just us in a and while. And then, we, you know, we've added Moran to the mix as well. So yeah. it's really just us today. And that's weird. We it it's been a while. Been just a while. A while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what's been going on in the past week? I mean, at this point, I don't even think we should ask each other that question every week. Because we know what the fuck we've been doing all week. We all been doing the same shit. Chewy. I think I've been I right. been, I mean, I've been working a lot. I have. I've been working. I'm pretty much done with our media kit. Good job. Queen. I started working on the ebook. Okay. I wrote like the first two chapters. You did? Oh, I'm going to write some. I did, yes. And um, what else I've been working on? I've been, I don't know. Like, I've really just been chilling. I have been working. Like I said, I've been working on some stuff for Poor Minds. But that's really it. I'm just ready for this quarantine to be over so we can get to the money. Yeah, I feel like the Sucking quarantine. I feel like the quarantine just came at the worst possible time. I felt like we had so much stuff planned mm -hmm. and things that we were trying to do, and it just came at the literally. We were about to open up for horrible decisions. We were working on our live show. Your yes. birthday was coming up. It was yeah. just a lot of stuff coming up. My birthday is canceled this year. Yes. I had to accept that. So yeah. I get to be this age again next year. Mm. <laughs> so well, next, next year we got to do it real big. Because not only did we skip this this birthday, but you know, next year is your big 3-0. So of course we got to turn up next like year. Like I said, I'm 28 again next year. I'm big. <laughs> next year we're going to have a lit birthday for you. Don't That's ask me say. how old I'm turning next year because I'm going to tell y'all 29. I'm fucking busy. <laughs> well, well, let's talk about the quarantine. Because you said you feel like niggas is doing the most during the quarantine. It's not that I think they doing the most, but I definitely really think that, like, quarantine got niggas, like, in their feelings. Especially think niggas who are, like, players and, like, you know, be fucking with a whole bunch of hoes. I feel like it really got them in their feelings about the ones that they did already. I don't think that they're in their feelings. I think they're bored. I don't even think that it's that they're bored. I, think, I think that they're lonely. And I feel like niggas is reflecting. People is out here dying. They're bored. I think they Because let me tell you what's going to happen. Once things go back to normal, they're not going to keep pursuing that girl that they feel like they lost. They're going to go back to their home ways. Everybody is like reflecting and being deep and oh my God, I miss you right now. People are fucking bored. We've been stuck in the house. Seriously. Like, I was so happy when Cash came. I'm like, a human. <laughs> like, wait, wait, you have like, Jazz. No, yeah, me and Jazz been here every day. y'all, I be going crazy. Because y'all know I live by myself. So, mm -hmm. I been at my friend Kiki house. Mm -hmm. Well, I have been back and forth between there and quarantine, babe. Mm -hmm. But. Let me find my business. Because, <laughs> baby, I was on the phone with Dre. I said, where you at? She said, nowhere. I said, oop. Cause you already knew where the fuck I was. No, I didn't. I didn't, yes, I didn't recognize that headboard. <laughs> Anyways, mm -hmm. but like I was saying, so you know, like I, I feel, I feel for the people who are single adults with no children and no men. 
And honestly, that shit is depressing. Like, I literally be having to get out of my house. And don't get me wrong, like, because I know some of y'all gonna try to get in my shit and be like, you're supposed to be self distancing. I mean, social distancing. I have been social distancing to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you will literally go crazy without any human interaction. You will. Like, I can't do it. Honestly, I, I know I say this all the time, but I'm so happy that I have Jazz mm -hmm. here because even before this was going on and I lived alone, that triggered my depression so bad. Yeah. So even though like some days like she'll be in her room, I'll be in my room, we won't see each other. But just to know that she's there, it just helps me a lot, mm -hmm. honestly. So thank God that I'm not going through this quarantine alone. Shout out to Lil Jazz. But yeah, as far as these niggas go, I um, feel like it's about to be a lot of rekindled relationships. Quarantine oh, don't rekindle shit over here unless you're trying to help me pay rent. I think it's oh for sure. Yeah, that's because rent is still that's trying to talk to me right now. I don't mind coming play house with you and shit, but you have to make sure my rent is paid the next four months. Cheers to that. <laughs> so yeah, I mean dead ass. Like niggas need to pay up. You want me to come over there and play house? I'll come do that. But I'm not gonna lie. But I need you to give me the money for my rent on the first. Okay, but of the next four months. So you remember how last week we talked about how everybody was going on live and everybody's doing a lot because of quarantine right now? Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of pussy and booty holes. More no, than regular. Yeah, your timeline just horny. Very fucking horny. I went. Well, you blend right in. I'm not horny. I'm not horny. How? What are you How doing? are you not horny? I'm just not you horny. You are the horniest. <laughs> You're the horniest. First Queen of all, horn. <laughs> Cream Medine and Queen Horn. <laughs> Shout out to Cream Medine. <laughs> Anyways, um, no, I'm not <laughs> horny, but I just feel like I'm not gonna lie. I was on somebody's live last night, and what he does is he'll like pin the girl's uh, cash app at the bottom, and they be on the Instagram like twerking and shit. And I'm not talking about just dancing. They're like showing their booty holes and busting it open, like you know what I'm saying? No, I don't. Are they getting paid for this? Well, when he started refreshing, when she started refreshing her cash app, she got everybody was sending her like a dollar. Imagine showing your booty hole on Instagram for a dollar each. And she had her face in the camera and everything. Ladies, let me tell y'all something. I know that we're all trying to figure out where uh, our where our next I coin is, be. where our next coin is coming from. But let me tell y'all something. Y'all are doing a lot on the internet. Let's just dial it back a little bit. If anything, get you an OnlyFans because these little Instagram these niggas trying to make y'all go on live. Don't, mm -mm. let's get the OnlyFans and get your own bag. Like, we don't have to go through these niggas to do that shit. Like, I don't, I hate when men try to just dictate shit. You know what I'm saying? I hate it. I don't feel like they be trying to dictate shit. I feel like they be trying to get their coin to it. And you got some dumbass bitches out here who be allowing themselves to be exploited. Pippin has gone viral. Seriously. Niggas. It's like a viral version of Pippin. I mean, everything is viral right now because we can't do shit. I know, but it's in just the like, physical. but I feel like, if, girls, if y'all gonna twerk and make and post your cash up, do it on your own terms or mm -hmm. whatever you're trying to do. Like my friend Diamond created a dating show and she made fifteen hundred dollars in two days. You had told me that fifteen hundred dollars in two days. Yeah. She made a dating show and basically you have to cash app her to be a contestant to come on her show. And the niggas started competing and cat and like kept cash apping back and forth trying to like impress her and she made fifteen hundred dollars. So it's like you can do things and she ain't showing sure. now pussy lip. Now booty hole. Nothing. I just heard that thing clapping though. It was clapping now. I heard but that. She, I said, nah. <laughs> she did. Of but it was on her own terms. In her own living room. She was fully dressed. She was just being entertaining. No yeah y'all not saying there's nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying I heard it. That thing was clapping loud. It started shaking my phone. Oh, my phone fell off. I the dropped bed. it. I said, <laughs> I said, hold on now, little diamond. But yeah, shout out to Diamond. But I, I feel like there's a lot of I feel like people are gonna get really creative during this time as far as making money. So what you about to do? I'm about to make an OnlyFans. What are you gonna do on there? This That's it? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't pay for I'm, I'm gonna advertise, you know, me and bikinis, but when they open it, I'm about to be in that whole cracking jokes. I'm gonna do my stand up. I would be mad. I would want a refund. Give me my no, 
refunds. No refunds. I'm putting that on the front of my page. No refunds. I would report you to OnlyFans, the corporate office. OnlyFans is not just sexual content, though. OnlyFans is for your fans. But you're false advertising. I'm not. You posting a picture in a bikini. I'm a say, I want to see that ass. Well, I'm a, I'm a, I don't want to see you sitting on the couch drinking fucking champagne. And cracking jokes. I don't want to hear them corny ass Ooh, jokes. My jokes are definitely worth three ninety nine a month. No, they're not. Ooh. When I get them for free, I want to see. Well, I can see your ass for free, too. Oh. You know what? Never mind, I lied. No, you can't. I just feel sorry for them. No, you cannot see would you my ass. A, would you give me like a free subscription? No, I would not. Why? Because you have to pay. Tom, why would I pay for something I've seen 30 times? You want to see it again or not? 30,000 times. Do you want to see it 30,000 and one? No. Well, not for three ninety nine. What? When I've seen it for three ninety nine. But my is three ninety nine. That's nothing to support me. You wouldn't want to support your friend? No, because you're a uh, false advertising. <laughs> anyway. That's not good business practices. So let me get into my first topic. Ooh, I'm showing the back of my phone. <laughs> my back of my phone cracked. <laughs> okay, um. I wanted, not the front of mine I wanted to talk about this because um, somebody had tweeted something the other day. And I really got really fucking angry. I'm not going to lie. Like, I started going off. I started retweeting it. And I just, it really push my wrong button now i will say this i have a dark sense of humor dark sense of humor is like if you ever watch like south park mm -hmm. um family guy like real stuff that's like low-key not supposed to be funny mm -hmm. but it is like suicide jokes stuff like that like that's dark humor type shit i think that's funny sometimes it, it can be a little funny <sighs> but judging you but i will say i do have my limits on what i think is funny so um a guy had posted a picture. So everybody knows the meme that's going viral right now of the little boy, or not little boy, of the man texting and the girl at the bottom texting back. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I'm in your city. And she's like, oh, have fun. Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So basically, somebody made a meme and the guy was at the top. He was like, damn, that pussy was good. And the bottom one was responding and it said, yeah, I know. But on the meme, it was a picture of Dwayne Wade's son that now identifies as um, a girl. Mm -hmm. And I that really fucking pissed me off. Because how would you feel? How, would, how do people think that stuff like that is funny? That is a 12 year old. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what somebody's sexual preference is, what they identify as, but this is still a fucking child. And I think for me, that's what I realized. Yeah. I draw the line when people start making fun of children. That's when you take taking shit a little too far. Because you know what? Karma is real. And you and you know, when things happen in your life because you want to be on the internet and be funny for a few retweets, yeah. that shit is fucking ugly and unnecessary. So that's what I wanted to talk about. Because he was like, y'all so fucking sensitive. Everybody's so fucking sensitive. And nobody can take a joke. But, and it's mostly men that were laughing. Mm -hmm. And this is my question to the men. Do y'all know how to be funny without being offensive? Like, why does everything have to be rape jokes? Why does everything have to be so jokes about, like, yeah. pedophilia and stuff like that? Because don't get me wrong, I think Dave Chappelle is hilarious. Well, I don't think everything... I don't think they make everything... Like well, man, I'm not going to say they... But a lot of the jokes... Yeah. A I lot... Mean, I see on Twitter, let me say, and I'm not talking yeah. about comedians. I'm talking about people who think that they're funny on Twitter. Mm -hmm. A lot of them make jokes, like, make rape jokes. They make jokes about... Dwayne Wade's son. I mean, like, but can, have we not said this before? And it just be rapey. I feel like if you a person who have a rapey ass personality, you're gonna think that shit like that is funny. We will never understand it because we are not, we don't have that mindset or that mind frame. Like, right. I don't think shit is funny when it pertains to people's children or making fun of children or especially sexual acts with children. Yes, like that. Like, that is stuff so like that weird. is not funny to me. So, I can never get into the mindset of somebody who thinks it's funny, but a lot of these niggas be weird and rapey. Mm -hmm. Like even how we was watching um Tiger King, them niggas was rapey, very fucking rapey as fuck. So it's like the mind of people like that is completely different from the normal person. You know what I mean? I don't know. I just think it's fucking sick. Like of all things that you could have put on a meme, you gonna put that little girl on a meme? That's Fucking disgusting. And yes, I said little girl. Because that's mean, what he want to be. Yeah, he's a little girl. So, I said he. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm me too. Little. But. <laughs> <laughs> now, we talking about jokes and you done made a joke. Then I didn't. I was 
was laughing at you because we both said he. Anyways, no, I didn't mean to. No, yeah. So I'll say this. Um, I don't think people. Now I will say. I do think people are a little more sensitive to jokes, you know what I'm saying? But I think it's also because people have educated themselves as well. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the things like we used to let slide, we don't need to let slide anymore, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, of course we're going to be more sensitive about certain topics and certain things because we've educated ourselves like, hey, this is not right. Now, I'm not going to lie. I still think, you know, jokes about black people are funny. That people think, oh, this is racist. That should be funny. Oh, like yesterday, people was making fun of Drake's son. And I think he's so cute. Oh, They was going in on the little boy. What they were saying? And they was just saying he was ugly and stuff. No, he's he not he ugly. like an albino. I see somebody say he's like an albino. I mean, you have to realize the kid is, is he's white. He's 75% white. He's a well, white boy. Well, that's what I was thinking. But then that's what was crazy to me, too. Because a lot of people was like, oh, um. I understand why Drake didn't think that was his son, or he maybe he needs to get a DNA test because that's not his son. You First think, of all, he did get a DNA test. If you think he has not gotten a DNA test, go he, he said it in that interview that he did with um fuck, I can't remember the guy's name. But he said it in the interview that he did. He said he had got the DNA test because and he was like, if y'all see my son, y'all will know why. And this was before the pictures even came out. So he knew that, you know, the boy didn't look like him. But y'all gotta understand that Drake is half Jewish. So and his mama is it. a straight up white woman. And the little boy looks like his mom. He looks me. exactly like Drake's mom. Yeah. Like exactly. I think the little but boy. But he's a cute, cute little boy. I just feel like people are weird. Yeah, people are very strange. I feel like you should never have the word ugly in somebody's child name in your mouth. I definitely agree. Because honestly, like those two words should just never be in. If anybody, a if together. anybody said anything about either one of my nephews. And call them ugly. What you gonna do? Throw them bowls. Honestly, that's one thing that is really fucking personal. I take that shit personally. Don't make no. I even get mad when people ask me about Jackson because I I tweet about Jackson so much. Your ass is crazy. Yeah, I am. Don't fucking play with my. What do you mean ass? Like so? Oh, uh, how's Jackson doing? I don't know you. Don't ask about my nephew. That's a little overboard. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It's because people are weird. That's overboard. I don't care. just ask you how he's doing. I That's not a reason to get upset. Yes, it is. Now, people do be taking shit overboard, like when they be talking about people's kids and calling people kids ugly and shit. I just hate that. Because let me tell you something. If I have a kid, not if, when I have a kid, motherfuckers call my kid ugly. It's on site. Well, choose your dad wisely. I No matter who I have my kid with, my kid gonna be cute. <laughs> the fuck y'all got him or her fucked up okay and what type of aunties you y'all seriously over here thinking my kid is ugly no I would not yes you is no I can't I cannot anybody close to me you have to realize when people close to you have kids it's impossible to think that kid is ugly and it could be an ugly kid and you won't see it well, my kid gonna be cute even if your kid is ugly I'm not gonna see it <laughs> Yes, you no mean. you're not like you know when you have a baby and your baby can be ugly as fuck but you don't see that your kid is ugly because it's Please, yours that's some bullshit my mama told me she feel like you know when your kid is no ugly. you don't no you do not you that's, do not know i don't feel kid. like that's true i feel like people know no they but don't you just be like oh but it's mine exactly it's yours you don't know Do a lot of people don't know that they're ugly no, nah, people be knowing they. No, they ugly. fucking don't. You crazy as hell. I Some people do, but a lot of people be like, "I'm a bad bitch." I'm like, "Well, the word bad bitch just be well, used very loosely." I mean, I, but I feel like people like that. I've always felt this way. I feel like people like that are trying to convince themselves and you that they're pretty or beautiful because nah, they know that they're not. I'm not gonna lie. This is one thing I follow on Twitter, and he's like, he thinks he's handsome. He got money. No. And he really thinks he's handsome. <laughs> he broke he Well, he's not broke, but he's just like a regular dude. And he really thinks he's handsome. Like, he says it all the time. How do you know he's not joking? He's not. He's definitely not. And I'm like, wow, you really don't see yourself. And God forgive me, who, I'm, who, who are me to judge? Who are me? Who are me to judge? You never seen that, me? You cute. Who? So, you. Me. Yeah. That doesn't mean, just because I, I, I'm traditionally attractive does not mean I can be the judge of someone. Yeah, it does. No, it does not. No, it does not. Because I don't, you don't mean, no, you can judge whatever you want to judge. You can have your opinions about whatever you want to have your opinions about. Although, opinions are not always correct. So, that is, you know what I mean? It's like your opinion might not be correct. No, my, it's a fact that he's ugly. Okay, so then how 
are you going to contradict what you just said and then say, how can I judge? I, who, who That's a contradiction. It is. Either you feel like you can judge or you feel like I you feel can't. Like, I feel like I can't, but I but do. You but can't. I do anyway. <laughs> so basically, you're judging him and you're saying that he's not attractive. He which does. I feel like everybody can do that. You you have the right to look at somebody and be like, damn, you ugly as fuck. You got the right. You got the What song is that? What's it gonna be? <laughs> I was about to ask you what song it was. I'm like, is this another original composition? <laughs> I oh, I got some original songs. I'm about to drop this EP on y'all. I'm dead. I see your cover. <laughs> I see your cover. I said the boys and the girls play entirely you, too much. You know, made this fucking album cover for you. It's coming. My EP is coming. Okay, so um, I want to get on to the next subject because I really, really want to talk about this. I'm sorry, y'all. This episode has been everywhere. This is just really different for me. I'm used to being in the studio. I feel more focused in the studio because I'm like, but now I just feel like we just talking, girl. And this is me. I'm over here looking at cash. They don't give a damn. They don't be giving a damn. They just be happy to get the episode. Somebody told Kiki that last night when she was on live. They was like, yeah, we not tripping off the fact that we not talking. We not tripping if y'all not talking about what y'all say y'all supposed to be talking about. Just we really appreciate y'all for still putting out content. Girl, we trying. Because it's been a struggle. It they shut our studio down. They shut our studio down. So the audio sounds different, you know, and we don't have the same. But, you know, we making it work for y'all. We really did this for y'all. Because like, mm -hmm. I didn't want to record today. This is Dre is doing. I didn't want to record today. She um, did. And I said we got to stay consistent. Okay, so this is what I wanted to talk about. Because something happened this week that I noticed that was brought to my attention and I didn't like it. I didn't like it at fucking all. What you ain't like? Um, I don't like when, um, okay, let's, I want to know, is imitation really flattery? Because we talked about this on the phone the other day because something was brought to our attention and, um, Dre was like, well, imitation is flattery because, you know, these hoes be... Because Drea has somebody that every time she changes her hairstyle, this girl does her hairstyle, like, every time. Like, every single time. So, at this point, we just like... And we okay. used to be friends. And so, it's really weird. But we used to be like... But at this point, we like, okay, you know, it's, it's flattering because she wants to be little Drea and it's funny. But when is the line crossed that it's not flattery anymore? That it's straight up fucking disrespect? Mm. because the situation that I'm talking about I'm not gonna speak on it I'm sorry y'all because I'm just not gonna bring light to the situation but in this instant Drea you said it was flattering I don't think it's flattering yeah I do I feel like because at the end of the day when you are doing something no matter what it is you know what I mean if it's a business if it's how you dress um, if it's how you talk, whatever, anything that gets you a lot of attention and makes people pay attention to you and people see that it's working for you, it makes other people want to do the same thing. Right. Or try to emulate whatever it is that you're doing because they feel like, oh, it's working for you. So, you know, let me see if it can work for me. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not their personality or if it's not the way that they dress or whatever the case may be. So the way I look at things like that is like, yeah, it's flattering to me because you could dress like me. You could talk like me. You could do all the shit that I do, but be true and never be me. Right. Because at the end of the day, I'm me. God created me to be who I am. Right. So he created me with all of these differences and special things about me that he wanted me to have specifically. Right. So it's like you could dress it up and make it look like me, but bitch, you still not going to be me because you don't have everything in me that God put in me to be myself, right. if that makes sense. So I just feel like I just always, and, and I guess because like I told you before, I've always kind of been a person from like middle school, high school, where like people were always like imitate shit that I would do. So you gonna talk your shit? You are so annoying. Anyways, so I feel like number one is something that I'm used to. Mm -hmm. I'm agreeing with you. It's something that I that I'm used to, and as you get older and you start making even bigger moves mm -hmm. and being around even more important people, <laughs> baby, baby girl. <laughs> And making waves and all that shit. Come on, what? I just feel like it's gonna get 
words. Like this is only the surface. This is a, we've only scratched the surface of like what we're trying to do. So this is only the beginning. So it's like if you're that offended right now by people like trying to imitate us or be like us, what are you gonna do as the show continues to grow? So this is my thing. Now, and like she said, we're not trying to shed too much light on the situation, so we don't want to speak specifically about what we're talking about, but it has something to do with the show. Um, this is how I feel. Now, if you try to uh, imitate who I am as a person, like the way I dress, the way I do my hair, the way I walk, the way I talk, anything like that, that's flattering to me. You know what I'm saying? Whatever, because this is what I do naturally. That's flattering to me. Like, if you try to be something, if you want to be anything like me or like Dre or anybody I hang out with, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. You want to be like me, you look up to me, cool. But when it comes to imitating something that I have worked so hard on that we created from nothing, that's not fucking flattering to me. The fact that we sat down for hours coming up with this name, coming up with this concept, coming up with content and... A lot of people are just clicking and clicking and copying and pasting. That shit is not fucking flattering to me. But I don't care though. Like it, it's like I get what you're saying, but to me it's not cool either way. Like it's not cool whether you're imitating me or whether you're imitating a, a product that I put out. Which in in this case, you know, poor minds is a product. Mm -hmm. So it's like whether you're imitating either one, it's not okay. I said flattering, yeah, because it's like oh that's cute, but. Is it cool? No, because bitch, you weird. Anybody that imitates other people to me is kind of weird, like knowingly. Yeah. I feel like you have people who are very similar, who have similarities, but they're not necessarily trying to be similar to each other. Yeah. But when you're actively trying to imitate somebody or imitate something that somebody else is doing, I think that that's weird, especially if you're studying it to be like them. That's weird as fuck. It's and I don't pissed. think it's, and I don't think it's. I don't think it's cool at all. But like I just said, again, to reiterate what I just said, you know what I mean? People could try to be like you all day, but they'll still never be you. It's only one poor minds. It'll, and that's what I'm going to say. Yeah, I mean, and as, and as the show continues to grow, I anticipate that it will be many more copycats. You know, I'll say this. But stuff like that don't bother me. It just kind of be like... And I, and I, and I, like I, I literally look at other people trying to do stuff like me or do stuff like us, and I think it's cute. I'll say this. Um, anybody out there trying to start a podcast or anything like that, the biggest thing for me that I look for when I listen to new podcasts is creativity and something new. Now, it's hard because the podcast game is very... A lot of people have podcasts right now, and it's very, and it's very competitive. But the worst thing that you can do is go listen to another podcast and be like, oh, we can do this. That's the worst thing you can do. When me and Dre started this shit, we was just fucking talking. And was like, you know what? We need to record this shit. Yeah. Every, every aspect of this show was created between us two. Not once did we turn on anybody else's podcast and was like, oh, I'll say the one thing that we took from somebody else's podcast was... When we started doing the listener mail. I got that idea from cocktails. Yeah. That's the only thing. But it, just because people wanted to listen. Because people were DMing us so much. Yeah, people about were already advice. asking us questions. That's the only thing. And shout out to Lil Kiki and Lil Medina at cocktails. Because honestly, Kiki has put us on a lot of games. Yeah, she has. So it's a difference between helping somebody. But you can, but you can do that. And you can be open to helping somebody else. When they're not trying to bite your style. Like, I think Kiki has been so receptive. And so um helping when it comes to our podcast because she knows we're not trying to emulate cocktails same thing with mandy like yeah mandy loves like doing... we, we literally have our own lane like mm -hmm. we talk about a plethora of different things mm -hmm. on the show it's not a sex podcast yeah, it's right. not, this is not a sex podcast obviously but um i mean and even if it was i don't think that that would be an issue with cocktails or horrible decisions as long as we just had our own lane mm -hmm. i think that the issue is that people not only try to create things that are similar to what you do but they actually be trying to like make it the same damn thing the same because like i, I said it's, it's, it's one thing to get inspired by something you know what i mean because that's okay inspiration I was in, from every honestly i'm not gonna lie a lot of different things the reason because we started off on youtube the reason i decided to switch it to being a podcast well we decided to switch it to being a podcast was because of mandy mandy yeah. was like hey sis y'all yeah and joe like they were like hey sis y'all need to do podcasting like this is where it's at right now this is where y'all can make money but 
this is hard work. This is not just, oh, sit in front of camera and just talk. Like, it's a lot. You know, you got to put a lot into this. So, honestly, um, I'm not happy about it. It really pisses me off. I know you don't care, but, and I'm being really lighthearted about it, but that shit pisses me the fuck off. I'm not going to lie. It really, really does. Because, like I said, me and Dre have been through hell. Like, hit rock fucking bottom with each other. I don't think it should piss you off. I just feel like it should make you want to go harder. That's how it do with me. Like, it makes me want to go harder at what we're doing and make it even bigger than what it is because oh the fact that because you have to think about it. Like, yeah, people be people are copying us or whatever are trying to be like us. But how many times have people copied off of people and then became bigger than them just because they was working harder? You just never know. So if anything, for me, it just makes me want to go harder because I know people on our ex mm -hmm. and people on our tail and trying to be like us and trying to get the same opportunities that we could get. But they might just be going a little harder or might know more people than we do and then they shit take off. And that's what would really make me feel shit. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's what would really piss me off. Right. Is somebody that's trying to be like us becoming yeah, bigger than us. Right. You know what I mean? So that's why I'd be like, okay, when I see shit like that, it just motivates me and be like, okay, what can we be doing? To go harder at this shit and to make our shit bigger because I see we got hoes who watching us paying attention to us trying to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. You right, you right. I'm gonna let you win this argument. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, you know, see, it's, it's 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 facts, and I feel like shit. It should just really boost your confidence because it should just make you feel like, well, shit. Obviously, well, I'm doing know. something. Obviously, I'm doing something right, hoes trying to imitate. Well, you know, I didn't grow up. And everybody didn't want to be like me, bitch. So this is me. I'm not saying no, that everybody wanted here. to be like me, but I did. But growing up, I've had like a lot of people. I want to be like you right now. Girl, shut up. You are so childish. Shut but up. no, I'm just childish. I'm just saying, like, yeah, like not that I had a lot of people that wanted to be like me. Oh, but yes, I, you did. Yes, you did. I just feel like people are weird. Like people want to be around anything that they feel is cool or that. I don't know. One, one thing I will say, I don't feel like people be wanting to be like me. I just think I'm intriguing to people. So it makes them want to get close to me or want to try to figure me out because and I'm hard like to figure out. And this hoe is annoying. <laughs> but I feel like in the beginning, you probably felt the same way. No, I think I was drawn to you because I was thrown off. Because I thought you were, <laughs> Why would you because you were actually smart. <laughs> Don't do that because the you don't have to do me. Yes, because girls that usually I worked in the club for a very long time, so usually girls that look like you were not all there in the head. Mm -hmm. You know, well, I'm not all there in the head, but, but I'm I saying, but you're smart, and it was just like we would, we would have conversations, and then we would talk about our goals, and it, like I know on this show we do talk about about like a lot about niggas and getting money from niggas and shopping and having fun and going on trips because that's what we like to do. But deep down, when me and Dre sit down and we be talking, we always are talking about our goals, things we want to accomplish. We're yeah. working, we're doing this. So I was like, when I met her, I was like, okay, bitch, you not like these other hoes because your friend, the girl that was your friend. We're not gonna get it today. Well, we met before. Me and you were friends before I was right. With her. And when you became friends with her, I said, "I'm not gonna. I let everybody judge their own book. Like I let you be the own judge of that book. I'm not gonna try to tell you how the motherfucker." But not is. trying to be funny. But even that person, like she a hustler. She bought her bread. That's cool. But it ended like I knew she it was just ended. not that smart. And she's not that smart. But she and she bought her bread, and she do be chasing her goals. However. She's not that seen. She's not it. that smart, and she became jealousy, just like I said. Like I said, in the potato, beginning. potato. These hoes gonna be jealous till they croak over and die. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so I want to talk about. I just feel like actually, let's go to the. I wish um, I could have some champagne. Mm hmm. So I'm yeah, so let me tasty. let me smell it. <laughs> you about to go get me a refill? Anyway, so let me know if y'all think imitation is flattery. Um, so we gon' get into the bed. The bed. Hey, come on, little dryer. That's a new oh, one. No. I wasn't ready for that one. Normally, I be sitting in a chair so my leg don't be propped up. So I'm I sorry, really y'all are listening to the audio. We're recording in my living room right now, so I don't feel, I feel like we're just doing this for YouTube right now. So that's why we're just kind of like, you know. Do it for the two. So I wanted to talk about today on how to. Why is my bra like these? 
Drea. Uh, I wanted to talk about how to improve your sex game. Because I feel like a lot of our listeners, we do have a lot of young listeners. Like a lot of listeners are in college, they're younger girls. I get so many, y'all shouldn't be having sex. No way. Girl, anyways, I feel like a lot of the listeners, <laughs> exactly. No, but, like, yeah. A lot, mm -hmm. girl, please. People are gonna, I feel like the realness of the world is instead of telling people what everybody they, horny. Yes. And instead of telling people don't have sex, let's be real and tell them the real about it. I was totally kidding because I was definitely getting fucked in college. You was getting fucked in elementary. No, that was you. I didn't start yes. fucking until middle school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking dead. It was not quite middle school. The summer before I went to high school. I'm fucking dead. You was in eighth grade? I was wrong. Freak. A big old freak. Big booty. Big old tree. Mm, that's what okay. you So I, what I wanted to do today, because I get a lot of um, DMs, and I know Drea does too, and we get a lot of them to our mail, just saying, oh, y'all like the big sisters that I never had. So I wanted to take the big, the big segment today and give y'all sex tips. Mm. I just wanted to give y'all sex tips on how- Do you how, have like a list of tips? Um, I have some in my head. I know oh. you have a few. I think I'll go first so you can kind of, you know. Um, so we wanted to give y'all sex tips on how to improve your sex game. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, the things I know now, I didn't know when I was, you know, 21, 22, 23. Like what? Um, so first things first, this is one of my biggest tips. Okay. So when you're first starting off having sex with somebody, you know, we do four, foreplay before. Mm-hmm. Always give him head first and then make him give you head. And let me tell you why. Mm -hmm. The most important thing about giving good head is having a wet mouth and making sure that you're giving that sloppy motherfucking toppy, okay? So what I've learned is when I let a nigga eat me out first, my mouth is open and I'm moaning and I'm letting a lot of air go in the mouth so my mouth tends to get dry. When I wore... You could do it at the same time. Oh well, personally, I don't like sixty nine. Oh, I like sixty nine because I like to relax when I'm. It is my hard head. to focus. It's though. hard to focus because I stop sucking that dick and I just be moaning. <laughs> yeah, and I just start beating. That's what I was gonna say. It is kind of hard to focus. So my first sex tip is make sure you give him head first because that's when your mouth is going to be the wettest because i know we all know when you're opening your mouth and you're moaning your mouth is going to get dry. Mm -hmm. Your mouth gets dry because your mouth is open. You talking. You moaning. First things first, give him head first, then let him eat you, and then y'all can go into the sex. Mm -hmm. And don't, and always make sure that you cover your teeth. Yes. I feel like that's a good tip. A lot of girls don't be really You're supposed to be gummy mommy. Yeah, you have to cover your teeth. Cover your with teeth. Your that's a good tip. Cover always. You don't, we don't, we yeah. not get a head like that. Mm -mm. Curl. I mean, although some dudes do like when you kind of graze. They be with your teeth. Yeah, but you have to ask but, them because that's a kink. Yeah. That's a kink. So you have to ask them if they like that. Yeah, but if you do it soft, most niggas like it. Because I be doing it to a lot of people. Okay, but. I mean, not that I be sucking a lot of people. Shit. How, I, what, I, what I mean no. is. No. You were sucking a lot of dick in your day. But that's what I'm about to say in my day. Not that I'm, you know, currently sucking a bunch of dick. Let me go get you some more champagne. Thank you. So I'll go on to my next tip while she refills me up. So my next tip is, I've actually talked about this on the past episode before. This actually helps with making your mouth wetter and your pussy wetter. Drink a lot of water. I know it sounds super cliche, but let me tell y'all, when you drink a lot, a lot of water the day you having sex or like the day before you start 48 hours before whatever it is, um, you're going to have to pee a lot, of course, but that helps you squirt. I know a lot of girls say, oh, I can't squirt. Oh, I don't. If you drink a lot of water, you're guaranteed to squirt, especially if he knows how to hit that spot, your G spot, you're going to squirt. So a lot of girls that want to be super, super wet, have that really wet mouth, drink a lot of water. Like, it's going to make your, it just makes your pussy wetter. It really does. And take you some sheet orgasms, and I think you'll get 10% off if you use the code. Poor mind. I don't think our code works anymore. It don't? Mm, I don't know. How you know? Why? Somebody said it didn't work? Yeah, somebody said it didn't work no more because we have to renew our deal with them. 
Oh yeah, yeah. But you can just still do the she orgasm. But yeah, still try, and you can get like the sample pack. You don't even have to order like the really, really big, expensive bottle. Mm-hmm. You can get like the little sample pack, and I think it have like ten capsules in it. And you need to take like three to four of them, like two hours before you have sex. Girl, girl, it really, really works. Mm-hmm. But sometimes when I don't have my she orgasms in handy or like whatever happens, drink, water. drink a lot of water. I'm telling y'all, if you drink water, 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 your pussy is going to be so wet. Like it's not even, it's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, I think we both drink an excessive you, amount of water. But the day, but I'm saying if you go above and beyond that day of, he's done. But I feel it. like if you drink enough water every day, you don't have to go above and beyond the day. You really don't, but you know, it definitely makes a lot. Just make sure y'all drinking water, period. Yeah, drink water, period. But I'm saying that day of when I go extra hard. Because <laughs> I hate when I go into the restroom stall in public and it be smelling like acid after. Oh, after my God. Somebody leave out. So just make sure y'all drink well, water, you know, I used period. to work in the club. You don't have to worry. The I used to work in the club. So I used to, I used to be in the girls' bathroom a lot. And I was just definitely not impressed. I've seen pee in the toilet before look like fucking orange. Somebody yeah, poured orange juice in it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It happens a lot. Like in public restrooms, I'll be like, oh, wait. We're not going to get off topic. Okay, you got a tip? Uh, uh, Let me think. Tip? What's a good sex tip? So another sex tip, I feel like this is very, I'll, I'll say this one while you think. Um, This is very old school, very elementary, very throwback, okay? So when a nigga is hitting you from the back, Make sure you play with them balls a little bit. You always supposed to reach back and play yeah. with them. Niggas love their balls being played with, okay? This is when you're giving head as well. When you give head, make sure you do not forget about the balls. Beat the dick, suck the balls a little bit, go back and forth. It's all one big motion. Mm-hmm. If you really advance, that's when you go back there to that booty hole. But that's another segment. Anyways, but definitely do not forget about the no, balls. No, it ain't. They can start doing it. If I knew about the booty hole back when I was in I, I probably would have already been missing oh, with niggas booty hole. Yeah. yeah, but I feel like college men, mm, I don't know if college men be ready for booty hole play because they be dirty. What you mean? My boyfriend, my little dude that I was fucking with when I was in college, he was not dirty. My boyfriend wasn't either, but I never ate his booty hole back then. Well, me neither, but I don't feel like it was dirty. I feel like if a bo- booty hole stank is a whole different type Ooh. of stank. If a nigga like, booty hole stank, even if you're not trying to mess with his booty hole, you can still smell it. In the words of Kiki says, rhinoceros. So. <laughs> In the words of Kiki says, so it smells like rhinoceros down there sometimes. Yeah, no. Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like, but I feel like that's something you will be able to smell for sure. Like, yeah, you can smell it even without it. messing with it. Yeah. So but I'll say that's one of my tips. Don't don't forget the balls. You ha- definitely have to include the balls in. On, you know, whenever he's hitting it from the bag, massage him, whenever you're getting hit. Just don't forget ball play. I feel like a good sex tip, and I mean, I don't know. I think if it, that is something that most men like. It's like talking to your nigga. Absolutely. Why y'all fucking? Absolutely. Like, you have to, like, talk in his ear and let him know he's doing a good job. Mm-hmm. You like it. Call mm-hmm. him daddy. Call him daddy. Tell him that pussy wet. Yeah. Tell him that dick feel good. I feel like you have to. We talk. might need to add that to a chapter in the book. Things to say while you fucking your BBB. Oh yeah, I got a list. It's a whole. I got a lot of things you can do to your BDB if you really try we to. Gonna do a, we gonna do a. We gonna do a. You gotta have your BDB shook to where it's like he he might he might drift off and leave, but he always he always come back. Come back. You gotta make sure your because these niggas are trash. They trash. But they gonna say you can't stop them from leaving. leaving. Right. But if your sex a one, he not gonna leave. They you always alone. gonna come back. <laughs> yeah. We gonna, we gonna do a sex chapter in our ebook. We gonna add that on. There. I thought we had one. Did we? I think so. I but yeah, that. the girls, y'all gonna love the ebook. It's gonna be real, yes. real informative. Okay, because y'all know y'all always be asking. So those are our sex tips. If y'all have anything y'all wanna add, always use protection. Make sure you strap up. I'm trying to think, do I have like one more? Do you? Because you got all the tips and tricks. I do, but this, but I'm trying to, but you said this is like for young girls, right? Yes, yeah, like Okay, yeah, girls. so I'm not gonna say some, some other shit. What? I feel like, you know. It's a little more advanced. Say it. No. We got, but we have older. But I feel like you don't need to. But you said this is for like the young girls. Yeah, but we have some. I mean, we have older ladies. Right. We're just going to put it in the book. Okay, okay. We'll put it in the book then. Okay, so now we're going to get into the bop. Ay. The bop. Ay. The bop. So, for the bop, this, 
But for the bop this week, we actually have a topic because I wanted to speak on the battles that went on this past weekend on Instagram. So, <laughs> as you know, Swiss Beats had a battle and um, it was Sean Garrett mm-hmm. versus uh, The Dream. Mm-hmm. And then he had Neo versus uh, Jonte Austin. Right. So, I wanted to talk about the battles. Did you watch them? I watched clips of both of them. I didn't watch the whole thing, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm a music kid, so I pretty much know a lot of the songs that all four of them wrote. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Okay, so this is how I so out of Sean in the dream, I definitely feel like Sean has more vibes. Sean definitely has more vibes. In my opinion. And then out of Jontae Austin and Neo, definitely Jontae because he's just he has just such a wide variety in mm-hmm. his catalog. To me, a lot of the bops that Neo have are his own and, and that's the same thing for the wrong. dream. Yeah, in the dream too. So not that there's anything wrong with that, but yeah, I mean, a lot of your claims to like kind of claims to fame songs are your own songs. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know, Sean and Junte, their catalog is just phenomenal. Different. I'll say this: yeah. the Sean and the Dream battle should have been way better. Cause I don't know what happened, or cause Sean said he was tired. He took some something for his tooth. He said he had a toothache. I don't know what was going on with the nigga, but I feel like if he would have been in his right mind the whole time. He would have, and I'm the dream stan. I love the dream. I was literally like, everything that the dream dropped is fire. His cap. <laughs> Drea, we're not doing this right now. The dream, I cannot, you cannot deny the, 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 the hits. How fucking weak. You cannot deny the hits that dream has, okay? But at the end of the day. What is what is Sean? What does he say? Uh, smash on the radio, smash on the radio, baby. Pinned it. He has hey. how, how many number ones did he say he had? I don't remember. It's like it's fifty. A lot. It's like fifty. It's a lot. Like I mean, fucking what's the name of that song? T-shirt. T-shirt by Destiny Child. A lot. Like I'm not gonna lie. If Sean would have been in his wall, right the wall by Chris Brown. Ooh, wall the wall. That was a thing to run it. Run it. Um, the song with Mario. Oh, love and you love yeah. and you love oh, bossy, bossy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> it's just if if I mean he has a lot. He has a lot. Now I'm not gonna lie. The dream did win by default just because he was so far ahead of Sean because he had dropped Holy Grail. He dropped Baby by Justin Bieber. He dropped Fancy. He dropped the song by Drake. Uh, Put those fucking heels on and work it. Girl. Oh yeah. That's dream. I might have Tonight to. Tonight I'm gonna dance. I might have to resubmit my vote. No, I'm not gonna lie though. We cannot say dream wasn't. Dream was. Dream won. Dream did win. Also, you do feel like no. Dream won. I feel. I said I felt like Sean won, but that's why I said maybe I need to reset. No, no, no. The all, but I would say the only reason that Dream won is because Sean was like he had. I don't know what was going on. He was out of there. He was kind of out. Yeah, he had some other shit going on, and then he started playing like stuff off his new album and stuff. But people wanted to hear the hits. I mean, show them your hits. Yeah, show them your hits. But the Dream did win just because he was so far ahead of him. Now, after Swiss had called Sean and was like, drink some water or whatever he said, Sean was playing a banger. He thought he was just a little drunk. You know, yeah, it's okay. Drink a little drink. We all, like, I'm a little drunk right yeah, now. Yeah, he thought he was just a little drunk. But at the end of the day, now, getting to the Neo and Jonte, mm-hmm. I like to think of myself as a little bit of music head. I'm not a big music head. So I was in, I'm in a chat. <clears throat> I'll be talking to Lil Rory. And me and Rory, like, Rory loves music. Yeah. Like Roy, I always respect his music opinion. Music podcast. Yeah, so Roy was like, John got this. I'm like, man, I yeah. don't know. I don't know. Yeah, he, I knew that though. Bruh, I was not aware. Yeah, I knew John was gonna beat me up for sure. I mean, it wasn't even he didn't write a song since he was like 14. He wrote mm-hmm. Sweet Lady when he was fucking 17 years old. Yeah, he didn't write it since Sweet was like Lady, girl, won't you be my sweet girl for a lifetime? When you need me, just call and receive me. You kind of thank you, Billy. You kind of sounded a little Ronald Osley. You're a contagious Ashman, baby. Then I'm in shape. Yes, in your way. Oh, 
mad when you don't sing every episode. <laughs> no, but honestly, I will say Jonte is so fucking flame. Yeah, he is. When he dropped "Be Without You," my heart literally stops. Mm -hmm. Cause him and Neil, was your song. bro, and I can't be without you, baby. And I'll be waiting up until you get home. Girl, leave me alone. The box, bro. And then he said, he played We Belong Together. We Belong Together was about. Johnson yeah. got fucking hits. He played, I think you better leave, leave me alone. No, get your bag. Oh, and, and get, get the, the hell, hell on. on. Bro, <laughs> his bag. Johnson bag was so fucking deep. I had no idea. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Neo had some good songs because he played but shit. I'm baby. But that was his song. But it was still a he wrote it. He, he did, wrote but it. a lot of the songs that he had was his song. Right. I just feel like yeah, I would say this. Your shit. Neo it hard to write a song for yourself. Neo had irreplaceable and it still didn't do enough. That's all I'ma say. And irreplaceable was and Ill, irreplaceable is one but, of if you talk about Beyonce top three songs, you're gonna talk about irreplaceable. I'm talking about numbers wise. Numbers oh, wise. Oh numbers wise. Numbers wise. Okay. Numbers wise, you gotta bring irreplaceable in the conversation. So and single ladies. And single, single ladies. Dream. Oh. He dropped single ladies on Sean. I'm not gonna okay. lie. He dropped single ladies on Sean. I'm but like, didn't Sean write a upgrade you? Sean wrote Upgrade. But that's Beyonce by herself. Right? That's not Disney that, Oh, uh, Sean oh. wrote Soldier. Right, but he wrote something else by Disney Child too. That, oh, Can You Keep Up? Did oh, he? I can't remember. I think so. I don't know. Yeah. Child. But, I mean, I will say this. Um, when you talk about Beyonce's top songs, yeah. Um, so Single Ladies it, is definitely up there. Oh, yeah. Right? Single Ladies is probably number one numbers wise. Yeah. But, um, Single ladies, if Sean would have been in his right mind, single ladies wouldn't have saved Dream. Sean just, he wasn't ready. Yeah, he wasn't prepared. He like, John Tay, John Tay, he had his songs. You could tell he had his songs written yeah. down and he knew exactly what order to play. But I also that think that their battle was better because they both just actually were giving each other respect. Like, Sean was just really doing a lot. Yeah, he was definitely disrespecting <laughs> with Dream a little bit. To where it was like, it was kind of crazy. It's a little personal. It was very cringy. But I was saying, a lot of it just moments. felt like it was personal. But you know like what? It's like a personal You know what I feel like it's going on there. I feel like it's because um a lot of people in the industry give Sean his respect, but I think that comes from a lot of people not giving him his respect that he deserves. Because then Sean, I feel like Sean feels like, why are you even comparing me to the dream when I have 50 number one records or whatever? You know what I'm saying? So Did either, have it, either one of them won a Grammy? I think the dream has. Uh -oh. Um, but the Grammys aren't end all be all. No, they not. I mean, at the end of the day, the one of the but most. If I, was art, I mean, if I was a songwriter, I'd be like, I'm not battling with you. You don't even have a Grammy. But but you can't say that because look at it. Nicki Minaj doesn't have a Grammy, and she's been one of the most impactful female writers since Missy Elliott. I mean, rappers since Missy I was Elliott. Say writers. Rappers. <laughs> don't do my. I'm a barb. Relax. I'm just saying, give Safari his credit. So, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. So, our bop of the week, we'll just say, um, I'm going to give a song by The Dream um, because this was my favorite song by The Dream at one point. Um, Fast Car by The Dream is my bop of the week from the Love Hate album. One thing I loved about the Love Hate album is how it would flow into the next song. Like, he mashed all the songs together. Mm -hmm. So, it's like one big song. Mm -hmm. So, uh, shout out to The Dream. Even though you did one by technicality, shout out to him. Jonte killed Neo, in my opinion. He did. So, um, yeah, that's my bop of the week. I guess my bop of the week will be T-shirt. Because I was really shook when I found out that Sean wrote T-shirt. You were. You were. And that's my shit. Like, I love that song. That's, like, probably one of my top three songs off the Destiny Fulfilled album. Mm -hmm. Like, I love that fucking song. Yeah, shout out Such to... Such a um, classic. So, that's going to be my bop of the week. Honestly, yeah, shout out to uh, Sean, shout out to uh, uh, Neo, Jonte, and The Dream. It was like, um, what you looking for the question? Yeah, girl, I'm looking at this question. 
Okay, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead. Now I'm going to go ahead and read our questions this week. Don't forget, you know what I mean? If you want any advice or anything from us, make sure you send your questions to x4minds at gmail.com and we will answer your questions. Also, please be mindful to try to keep your questions brief, as brief as possible, because this is um, a novel that I have to read right now. So it says, Hi, Drea and Lex. Please keep my name anonymous. Let me start by saying I came across your podcast on my podcast suggestions and fell in love with it from the first day. Keep doing y'all thing. Okay, y'all. I have this friend that I've been friends with for over nine years now. We were so close that we even called each other sisters. I got pregnant four years ago and met this dude a couple of months before I even knew I was pregnant. And a week or two after I stopped talking to my baby daddy. Long story short, he stayed around for the whole pregnancy and he stayed up till she was almost two. Which amazes me because a lot of dudes are not going to stick around when the baby is not theirs. Mm. Anyways, we got into a huge argument that left us not talking for months at a time. He moved away and I moved on with my life. I was definitely heartbroken. I confided in my friend and to try to pe and try to piece together what went wrong in the relationship. A few weeks later, she had tagged him in one of her posts. I asked her when did they even start talking or even start being friends. Mind you, I never introduced them until a couple of weeks before our huge argument. She said that she added him when I had tagged him in a post. Mm -hmm. One day we went out for New Year's and he had posted that he had a surprise in a couple of months. I asked him what the surprise was and he didn't really want to tell me. That's when she said, oh, I will hit him up on his regular number and ask him what it is. I was really confused because after we had our big argument, I stopped texting him on his regular phone and started just talking to him on social media. Plus, we both changed our numbers. I found out that she's been talking to him behind my back and they have gotten really close in the last two years. When I brought up how uncomfortable I feel about him talking, about talking to him, knowing, hold on, see y'all be having some typos, wait a minute about him talking knowing what me and him went through she just says that's bro and kind of brushed it off she always says i'm rooting for y'all to get back together then she was always posting about him and even posted a picture of him and his baby saying i love them she posts about him like he's her dude or something she even bragged about how close they've gotten especially since we are not really that close anymore me and him talk here and there but never like a full conversation just checking in on each other. I know that he is not the type of dude to date someone I'm close with or get involved with someone I'm close with. And he really is just all about his money. She always brings his name up in conversations, even if we're not talking about him. And it annoys me because I don't really like talking about any of my exes. I just don't get, I just don't get the point she's trying to prove. And it seems very childish to be befriending my ex. I have had other boyfriends since him. And she still finds a way to, I guess, make me jealous that she's talking to him. My other friend of seven years doesn't do this. And if I'm done with someone, she's just done with them too. Right. I just really feel some type of way about this because that relationship was different. I guess my question is, do you think she's wrong for being friends with my ex or am I tripping? Why do you want to be friends with your friend's ex? Yeah, that's real weird. That I would real not weird, be sis. friends with that hoe no more because, bitch, if you cut him off, unless y'all, like, I could unless y'all were friends before me right. and started hooking that's up. That's what I was going to say. Like, maybe if we all had went to college together and you was friends with him in college before me and you became friends, then that's a little different. If we break up, I don't expect you to just completely cut ties with him because this is somebody you was cool with before you got cool with me. But... Considering the fact that she met him through you and then she had just met him right before y'all stopped talking. Like, what the fuck? It's not even like they was around each other enough to be able to build a relationship right. or build a bond because y'all was always together while you and him was in a relationship. You just introduced her to him right before y'all broke up. So what the fuck business do she got talking to him? Damn sure what business do she got posting him Girl. on social media and posting him and his kids talking about I love them. Like, no. That bitch cross the motherfucking line too and I feel many like times, she and say, I would be done with that hoe. Did she say that she, has she talked to her about it? I don't think she talked to the okay, girl. Okay, so my thing well, is Well I this. think she did talk to him about it. Talk to her about she, it? I mean she did talk to the girl about it. But obviously the girl don't care. So this is my thing. So, if you've talked to her about it and she hasn't shown that she cares or changed her behavior then that lets you know that how she feels about mm -hmm. your friendship. Because anything that I bring up to a friend 
if you don't change it or let me know why you're doing this mm -hmm. and try to explain to me your logic on that yeah and you don't try to make me feel better then that lets me know how you feel about our friendship mm -hmm. especially over a man yeah. like to For me sure. that's just very fucking I don't like it, sis. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Cut so yeah, girl. so yeah. Look at that bitch. Girl. Girl. The words okay, him. Um, I think we can. I think we'll have time for two questions because this one's pretty short. Okay. Um, it says, "Hey, girls, love y'all. Enjoy the show." So my question is, what is the best way to get into media? I'm currently in school as a communications major with my focus in mass media. I want to get more into possibly radio hosting, amongst other things. My school doesn't help as much, and my city isn't like Atlanta with so many different opportunities what do you guys suggest or how did you flourish into media opportunities sorry i try to make it short and this is from charlie miller so shout out to charlie um my thing is honestly being in the best town is the biggest advantage if you can, i agree if you are in a small town i wish i would have taken advantage of being in my small town growing up and doing that stuff if you can you it's going to be easier for you to get on the radio or you to do radio things internships are very important go up to the radio station and see what the fuck they need help with there's a lot of free work but that's how you network and get to know people um i feel like when you move to a city getting on radio is in fucking possible it is so, yeah i don't know how we made it happen but we did well i was gonna say that i do agree like um, I've never stayed in a really small town except for when I was in college. But I do agree that if you stay somewhere where the population is very small, take advantage of that because it's not as much competition as if you're living in like Houston or Atlanta or New York or, you know, Miami or whatever. Like if you live in Orange, mm -hmm. it's not that many people that's trying to do mass media as it is if you move to Houston. Mm -hmm. And so if you do get on the radio while you're staying in Orange, by the time you do decide you want to move to a bigger city like Houston or Dallas or whatever, you already have experience under your belt, which will put you like in the top running to possibly get on the radio in a bigger city. Because like Lex said, if you move to a big city and you don't have any experience in mass it's not media, happening. it's not happening. Because you can move to a big city with a big resume and it still won't be Because I remember even when me and my old roommate, we first moved to Atlanta, we both had degrees in mass communications and we both wanted to do radio. And it was damn near impossible to get a job at a radio station. Like she had to get like a little internship. Mm -hmm. And then it was really hard for me to find something. And then me and Lex just started working on Wind Down Wednesday and Poor Minds. And we ended up getting the opportunity to be on the radio because of that. Mm -hmm. But I think we had kind of just we kind of a little slid off. Not the threw away our dreams of being on the radio, but like radio wasn't our main focus anymore. But it's crazy because it just ended up kind of coming back up. full circle. Mm -hmm. And I'll say this: um, definitely try to ask individually because sometimes you can't go through the internship of the radio program. Mm -hmm. But ask these VJs individually, like, what do you need help with? Because I used to um, go up with uh, Key West when he was on 97.9. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to go up and just sit in with him. I was just like, I don't want to do nothing. I don't, or if you need help with anything, I just want to learn the boards. I want to see how you do shit. So he was like, yeah, like he used to like teach me a lot of stuff, like how to create content and stuff like that. So sometimes you can reach out to these people individually and offer them something like help or anything that they can do. So. That's the best advice. I did the same like. thing with Kiati for a little while, too, mm -hmm. in Houston at 979. Shout out to 979. Okay, we have a lot of mail this week, so let's just do we one do. more. Let's okay. just do one more. Um, Okay, so it says, hi, ladies. Please don't use my name. I need advice on a situation. I'll try to make it short as possible. I'm 26. I met a guy when I was 19. We messed around heavily for two years. So 2015, he moved back home, and we didn't talk for almost a year. We got back in touch and we would talk on and off. Fast forward to 2018, I'm going to visit. 2019, he came here for his 27th birthday and spent a few days with me. So seven years later, he finally made me his girlfriend. We did wonderful for three months, but one day he just stopped talking to me cold turkey. I'm not sure if he was really fed up with me bringing up the past or what. IDK, if it's another female, and in quotation, she put, I don't feel like that in my gut, but I really don't understand what it is. So he was ignoring me, but we did exchange a few little words over the past few weeks. I've loved this man since I was 19 and I'm so hurt. He's had a lot of trauma, IDK. We are so connected and I feel like he will be back like always, 
but it's just like I don't want to break the cycle but what the fuck I try to do everything to keep him to keep my mind off of him and it always reverts back to him I need advice y'all I'm so sorry it's so long I can go on and on okay I have a similar situation like this like <laughs> The best thing when it comes to niggas who be stressing you out and she mm -hmm. who be getting on your nerves and you can't help but go back and forth to them. First of all, I feel like they more toxic ass niggas. This is a toxic number relationship. one. So this is a toxic relationship. But you know, um, I feel like most of these niggas is toxic. So when it pertains to shit like this, I just feel like ask yourself, how is this person being beneficial in your life? Right. And are they beneficial in a way to where, you know, it's better for you to have them in your life than not? Mm -hmm. And if you can't answer that question and say it's more beneficial for you to have them in your life, then you need to let them go, especially if they're toxic. Because I feel like, like I said, a lot of niggas be toxic. But some niggas be toxic, but they be a little worth the headache. Because mm -hmm. they be lightening your burdens if that makes sense so if this person in my opinion is not doing anything to make your life easier and on top of that he's stressful and annoying let that nigga go and not only that i think you need to outweigh the good and the bad because i think that was my problem with rapper bay mm -hmm. i i would always just think about the good times but when i really sat down and i wrote down the good versus the bad the bad outweighed the good you know what I mean? So when you love somebody for so long, you come to a point to where you don't know if you love them or if this is just a habit and you're comfortable. So once I was at that that crossroad where I didn't know, I'm like, is this real love or is this just something I'm comfortable with? So that's what you need to ask yourself. Do you really love this man or have you just been used to the same shit for seven months? Because when I was in my situation, Wait, they only been dating for seven months. No, she said no. I mean, seven years. I'm sorry. Oh. They've been dealing with each other. I'm for about seven to say, years. girl, cut that nigga off. No, I'm sorry. They've been dealing with each other for seven years. So my thing is, you get to a point to where you realize that somebody is a habit, and you have told yourself that you love this person so much that you really believe that. But you gotta realize this is not what love is. Love, not relationships, aren't easy. But relationships are supposed to be beneficial. They're supposed to be enjoyable. And they're supposed to make you happy. Mm -hmm. And if they're not doing any of those things for you, you need to do it for yourself and be selfish and let it go. Yeah. So I think you need to really sit down and figure out, do you really love this man? Or is this just some, a habit that you created? Because he got you at a time that you were becoming a woman. Y'all met when you were 19. You know, you're at a... Let me tell you... A lot changed. A lot changes. From 19 to 26. A lot changes. So I think you need to. I think you need to let it go. Because anybody. Let it go. Anybody that can just stop talking to you cold turkey. Is not somebody that I feel cares about you. Because at the end of the day. People that I care about. I can never just cut it off. I'm going to at least tell you what's going on. And give but you're also a woman. Um. Yeah. True. The way men and women handle things are different. I'm it's, not saying that but I, it's I don't respect. agree with you. It's I'm not respect. saying that I don't agree with you. I do feel like it's fucked up for somebody to just cut you off and not say nothing to you. But I don't necessarily think that it means that they don't care. Not that I they don't think care. some people are avoiders and some people just don't like having conversations so they avoid having conversations he probably had some other shit going on and maybe he do care that's why he didn't want to and I agree. It's not shit, but sometimes niggas don't bring shit to you because they do care a little bit. Well, it's but not even about caring because obviously he's been dealing with her with her for seven years, so he cares. It's about a respect. But also too, yeah, it's like he cares, but he might just be coming back to you because he's comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I would never really want a situation where a nigga only coming back to me all the time because he's comfortable fucking with me because he know I'm gonna let him come back. So then you're not gonna never get what you want from a situation. I, I'm not sure exactly what it is that you want, but mm -hmm. you ain't gonna never get that if you just always. And he that. and he made you he wait as a doormat six seven years just to get in a relationship, girl. He trash. Now I do agree with that shit. I feel like niggas know what they want from you. Off top, yeah, I was gonna say after the first few months, but you're right. Off top, niggas know what they want from you. If a man makes you wait seven years to be in a relationship with him, or seven years for anything for that matter, anything that you've been vocal with him about you wanting, yeah, yeah. Right. And let me say this because I just read an email because I don't, I don't check the email till we about to read it. So 
first of all, when y'all send emails, it's so if y'all want your question answered on the show, it's askpoorminds at gmail.com. Somebody just sent an email just talking about me, just talking mad shit about me. My thing is, you I don't... I read that this morning. I was going to talk to you. Sis, you, you don't even know the storyline. It's not even the same dude. And bitch, you know who I'm talking to. You're a weirdo. Stop emailing us from a fake account and being a fucking weirdo. Because it's not even the same guy. You see what she said? It's not even the same fucking yeah, person. I just feel like our Ask Poor Minds email is not a e- it's not an email for you to send like hate mail. It's not a hate or, mail account, or, fucking weirdo. Yeah, or stop send, listening to the show, bitch. If that's how you feel, or stop. I mean, or like it's not somewhere for you to send your disdain or your dislike for the show. Like if you don't like the show or you don't like certain things about the show, that's fine. You don't have to listen to the show, but you also don't need to be writing emails to the account saying and mean things because that's not okay it's really weird like if you know, it's weird and it's like bitch say it with your shit she you want to send a motherfucking email bitch send it out show, tell me who you are profile. tell me show me tell me who you are what are you doing that so girl i'm not even gonna get mad at because i've been drinking a little bit um so do you have an item of the week i don't have an item of the week this let week. me think let me think what's the item of, oh um I guess the item of the week can be my hair. Mm. I'm acting like you. Yes, but you know, oh, so now it's cool. Well, because this is actual. This is the actual product because this isn't my hair. Anyways, so yeah, so I'm gonna use my hair as the item of the week, mm. and the hair is by Free Trace. It's called Water Wave. A lot of y'all been asking me what type of hair um did I use for my passion twist, and y'all been asking me who did my hair. I did it myself. Ooh, how much you charge? I'm not available to do yours. Oh, um, what about me? Yeah, I can do yours. We can talk after the show. I got three dollars. Okay, no, I can't oh, do okay. yours because that doesn't even cover the price of the hair. So, <laughs> let alone the labor. So, anyway. Um, so, yeah, so the hair is by Free Trace. It's Water Wave. Um, I usually get like six packs of the hair. Six packs? Yeah. How much is a hair per pack? I think the hair is like six ninety nine per pack. $6.99? But I love this hair. I mean, I love this hairstyle as a protective hairstyle. Um, it I looks really good. thank you, but I really wouldn't recommend it. Like if you're going on a vacation or anything wow. like that, where you're gonna get your hair wet, because um, your real hair tends to like slip out, and it's a very loose. I wouldn't recommend it either if you have like really really silky hair. Oh well, I got nappy hair, so I'll be good. Well, yeah, you'll be fine. <gasps> you want some? <laughs> But yeah, but if I don't have like super, super silky hair either, but if you do have silky hair, it's not really a good hairstyle for you because I assume it would probably slide out because it'd be about to slide out my hair. Yeah. And mine ain't as silky. But anyways, that's my item of the week. Um, If you want to do your hair like this, all you need to do is get on YouTube and look up You should, You should do a video. Or, I just have to do should. one. Just take out one and show them how to do one. That's a good idea. So yeah, I might do that and then upload it on our channel under another tab. Mm. So that y'all can see. We have a hair tab. Okay. Remember I did my wash and go? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm actually going to go ahead and do that this week for y'all. I'm going to make a little video showing y'all how to install maybe like two or three of them. And yeah, that's my item of the week. Because okay. I've been getting a lot of questions about that. So it is real easy and it'll save me money. And as always, thank y'all so much for tuning in. I'm sorry if I was a little aggressive this episode, but I am just been struggling with this quarantine and I just really miss my sister. So I had a lot of bidding to do today. We are sisters. Mm, you singing today. We sing together. So thank y'all so much for tuning in. Um, I don't want to shed too much light to the negativity, but so for y'all that are tuning in. I raise Charles to the bullshit. And y'all who do love us and show us love, thank you so much for tuning in every week. Make sure y'all get y'all's merch. Um, as soon as this shit is over, we promise we're going to do a live show. Houston and Atlanta will be the first cities that we go into. Um, thank y'all so much. Shout out to Lil Cash for coming through. Thanks, Cash. And we'll see y'all next week. Bye, y'all. Bye.